This is the Prayer Culture Podcast, where we talk about building prayer into the lives of Bible-centric churches and individuals. I'm your host, Michael Green. I have a background in missions to the Islamic world, as well as being the founding member of Puramore, a ministry that is dedicated to developing a deep culture of prayer within local churches and communities. My co-host, Patrick Rowe, is a board member of Puramore, as well as being a longtime church planner in the greater Houston area and Thailand. This is the Prayer Culture Podcast. As a reminder, the Prayer Culture Podcast is a ministry of two or more, which is a crowdfunded ministry. So if you enjoy this content, please check out our website and giving page listed in the description. Also, when you have a second, hit the like and subscribe button. So Ryan, you mentioned holiness, and that's something I've heard you talk a lot about with linked to gather house and prayer and seeking the presence of the yeah. Lord. You talk a lot about holiness and um, I'm really encouraged by that, but kind of share a little bit like how the Lord's emphasized that part for you and why it's important. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing we've found um, in even just finding worship leaders to lead with us, um, purity of heart has been the most important thing. I've actually, I, there's been incredibly talented folks that I'm just like, there's not purity mm. in their heart. And when they sing, it's not like a clear stream of water that comes out. When they spontaneously lead out, it's not coming from a well that's clean, you know? And I think it, it it's interesting because we know that we've been washed clean by the blood. Like our sin has been removed. But if we continue to dabble in those things, even after that, it's like, yes, the sin is removed, but you're polluting a clean thing. Mm -hmm. And so there's the, and I, you know, and it's something that you just, you sense it in the spirit, but there's like, there's just an impurity. And sometimes it feels counterfeit. I like to liken it to like the strange fire where it's like, it was fire, it was hot, but it was done in the wrong way yeah. and it wasn't authorized. Mm. And I noticed that a lot in the Christian movement. There's a lot of things. And I tell people, I'm like, be careful of strange fire because it's going to feel hot. It's going to feel like the real thing. Like yeah. it's going to, and it might even burn you like, and you'd be like, Oh, I got touched by it. And I'm like, but it's unauthorized and it's mm. not holy and mm. it's not blameless before the Lord. There's flesh involved. There's, there's, you know, a spirit of um, greed because they're like wanting to take your money afterwards or mm. things like that. And I'm like, so we, j- we're just trying to function in the, in the purest way that we possibly can before the Lord. And that just means living righteous and blameless as, as best as we can. We know there's grace for when we fall, but I also think there's the difference of abuse of grace where, because we, especially in the music industry, you see people night after night, they're getting up on platforms, they're singing all the right words, they're looking the right way. Mm -hmm. And then you hang out with them in the green room and you're like, I don't even think you know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so for me, and maybe holiness is like, holiness is a difficult word because we know that we are made holy only by Jesus. We can't yeah. do that on our own. It's a circumcision of the heart, not of the flesh. But at the same time, it's like, but to keep the temple holy, to keep yeah. this tabernacle holy. And I think it also comes from my study of the tabernacle and understanding we don't live in that law. But can you imagine the sense of gravity that the priests understood that if mm-hmm. they walked into this place and they had not cleaned themselves properly and they yeah. had not, like, they were living literally dead on the spot. They had bells around their feet in case that happened, you know? And so it's like, you know, obviously we live under a new covenant, but he's the same God then and today. And I'm like, he deserves the same respect. He's worthy of the same approach Mm -hmm. as the priests of the Old Testament as well. And so when we come into the holy place, we just try to, we, we try to lay down anything that could put us in between him and us, you know? And so that means laying down motive. That means laying down uh, our desire to be liked and known. And so oftentimes you see people ministering and function in a way you're like, that's not you. I just talked to you off the platform. Like, what is that? Mm. And it's like, it's like they're putting Mm. on a different image. Yeah. And I'm like, that's a corrupted image because the Lord made your image perfect. And then when you try to add someone else's thing onto you, or you start Mm. singing in a style that 
Stephanie Gretzinger stings like, or you start preaching in a style that Francis Chan preaches like. I'm like, it's not you. Like God made you you on purpose. Yeah. Why are you trying to like corrupt that thing by mm. putting someone else's calling on your life? Mm. And so I even call that like not living holy before the Lord because mm. when I come before him, I want to be completely void of anything else other mm. than myself. I want to bring myself as a, as a sacrifice and oh. not have anything else attached to me. Motive, desire, like even my desire for man's approval, I've had to really lay that down because you, we yeah. just function in a society that's like, we just want, we want man's approval. We want to know that what yeah. we're doing is, is great. And I'm like, even that I've had to come before him and been like, even if everyone leaves this place tonight and hated tonight, what I'm bringing you is myself as a sacrifice and what you've asked me to bring. And that's as, that's as best as I can do. I can't control the approval of man. I can't control anything else. All I can do is bring myself as a holy offering unto God, yeah. a living sacrifice, yeah. you know, put myself on the altar. And right. so that's kind of where that heartbeat that's comes good. from. I, I knew a pastor who was publicly, and he, he was pretty famous at the time, it publicly in front of a large crowd of people was questioning himself on this very issue mm. and he was saying why is it that in public when i pray it's so eloquent <laughs> yeah. you know and it, and he was really questioning yeah. he wasn't even giving the answer you know but yeah. it's like it's so eloquent you know i know just what to say i remember all these scriptures and then he said in private it's like choppy uh -huh. guttural uh -huh. long silences because <laughs> you're just like really now you are right. really at the feet of jesus and you're just going i, I I don't know. I need you. <laughs> exactly. You know? But then you get the public persona and it's easy to slip into that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially in a world that's everything's curated yeah. and everything is ready for that 30 second Instagram post, right. you know, and uh. it's like that is not. <laughs> authentic no. living before God. Yeah, so artificial. We, like we are, we're not meant to live a life curated. Like mm. we were meant to live honest before him. And I try to do that when I speak at gather nights and stuff. Like it's like Paul, he says, I did not come to you with wise words and eloquent. I came to you in the power of God, because mm. if anything's going to happen in this room tonight, it's because the spirit's going to move in this room tonight. Right. It's not going to be because I prepared some beautiful, you know, thing that moves your heart. Yeah. Cause then I go, if I do that, that and your heart is moved was the spirit actually the thing that yeah. moved it or did i actually right. manipulate you right and because, then will it last and will it last and i think honestly that's why we're not seeing lasting transformation mm. because people mm. are actually responding to a manipulative gospel as opposed to just the straight power of god in mm. a service and they might feel something for a little while and they might even like if you read a Oprah Winfrey book on how to live a great life, you might actually live a great life for six months. And then mm. you realize, wait, this doesn't last. This is not yeah. lasting. You know, you can implement yeah. certain things, but it's like true transformation can only happen by the spirit. Right. And we have to allow the spirit in our services to transform people. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And, and, you know, you said like six months, you could, you could be a nice, successful person for your whole life really years <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and die and it was worthless. Yep. You know, Jesus is going to go, I didn't even know you. Yep. Which is horrifying. Horrifying. It is totally horrifying. But it what it does do is drive you to like, well, okay, if I want to be right about anything in my mm -hmm. life, it's that I can stand honestly before God. Can I also add too, because you brought the scripture up. He says that to people who said, we prophesied in your name. Yeah. We did all this in your name, which I'm like, that sounds like. People who are thinking they're like, they got this thing down. Right. Out, and yeah. he's like, I didn't even know you, right. which makes me go, there is a counterfeit that can happen in the mm -hmm. church that looks like the real thing. It smells like the real thing. And so we've got to be really discerning on what that is, yeah. because if it's a void of relationship with him, it might have all the sparkle of right. a move of God. But if it's void of him and relationship with him, he's actually saying that to people who have actually like yeah. done the Christian thing. Right. You but, know? but not in spirit and in truth. Exactly. That's that's the difference, exactly. isn't it? It's the sincerity of heart before the actual God you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's the difference. Yeah. Exactly. You know him, he knows you. Yeah. There's relationship first. All yeah. of that's the overflow of your connection mm. with him. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you're saying that's discernible by the power of the spirit, right? Mm. Yeah. Prophet subject to prophet. Yeah. Like you have to have you have to have the body discerning what the body does. And then we also yeah. can't 
be afraid to correct. Like, yeah, right. if we want to see a true move of God, we also have to not be afraid of correction. Yeah. Like, and being honest. Like, as honest as we want to see a move of God, we also have to call out when it's not a move of God. Right. Yeah. You know, and I think too much too much counterfeit, too much strange fire has been allowed in the church because we just go like, oh, that was weird, and then we move on. And I'm like, uh, that needs to get called out, you know? Like, right. that that can't happen. It was not holy. It was yeah. not of right. God, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, speaking of holiness, I think it's easy for us in the church to confuse holiness with kind of stodgy religious stuff. Legalism. Yes. Right, yeah. and, yeah, obeying the rules. Exactly. Where yeah. holiness really is an act of love, Mm-hmm. toward God who you believe to be worthy, yes. you know? It's like this yes. is all really worshipful yeah. and loving and out of gratitude and not yeah. just like obey the rules so you don't get squashed, right. you know, or so that someone doesn't see you be bad. It's like holiness is actually worship. Exactly. It's like your way's better. Your thoughts are higher. Yeah. Your ways are higher. Yeah. You're also worthy you. of a life laid down. You're yeah. worthy of my life on the altar. You're right. worthy of that, you right. know? Yeah. Because it's so easy to get into that legalistic mindset where you're like, well, I did this and I did this and I didn't, you know, do this to my, I didn't wear this kind of thing and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And now I'm holy. And it's like, what? Right. That's not holiness defined by the Bible, right. you yeah. know? But yet we right. live that way. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think anywhere there's a, a lack of genuine holiness, genuine biblical kind of holiness, you're going to find a corresponding lack of love mm. for God. So good. That's just, I yeah. think that's what it gets down to. I desire obedience, not sacrifice. Like, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't just do the things. And Jesus says, right? if you love me, you'll do what I say. Like, that's, mm-hmm. that's. Yeah, part of the relational aspect is like, yeah. hey, we actually care about what God cares about, and we want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that, with what, sincerity. Yeah, you said genuineness. You say sincerity all the time. Yeah. The more and more I go through life, it's like God just so values sincerity. Oh, yes, so utmost, much. Yes, utmost. Yeah. Well, and I would say, like, you know, the more your relationship with him's deep with him deepens, the more you realize just how worthy, just how great he is. Like, yeah. I don't it's it's not difficult for me to like put plans aside to do something for him because he's worthy of it. Like, yeah. he, I mean, he literally laid down his life for me. That's enough. But then he goes on to fill me with his spirit, to bring me to new life, to to heal me, to set me free, to deliver me from horrible situations. I'm like, he's so worthy of all of it that he's worthy of my time. He's worthy of my sacrifice. That It's like when, when you know him and yeah. you know He's just that good. Yeah. It's not difficult to like be like, yeah, uh, I'll do that for <laughs> right. you. Obviously. Yeah. I'm like, he's like, hey, do this. I'm like, sure. Like, yeah. you don't have to ask me twice. Like, yeah. you're so worthy of it. You're just that good. You know? Yeah. yeah. Right on. So um, when you lead worship, Ryan, what are some practical things you do to help facilitate presence? Oh, jeez, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, right off the just top of your popcorn, head. <laughs> just, just popcorn. Just popcorn. <laughs> ideas, like things you do. Maybe you, you know, you know. Um, I I would say it, it's, um, I would say I don't come hungry. And what I mean by that is I've, I've fed myself on the Lord mm-hmm. and in his word in the secret place oh, so that yeah. when I come to lead the people, I'm not there to eat. I'm there to serve. Mm. And so, because I think too oftentimes we, and we witness it a lot, worship leaders who get up on a platform and, and they're there to lead a corporate, a corporate worship expression, but they're actually coming to like eat for the first time. Mm. And I'm like, well, no wonder they can't lead the people well because they're having this beautiful moment. And like, there are video, I I think some of my favorite worship videos is when you see a worship leader just like, just having a moment with God and everyone else in the crowd is just like, right. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm Must not denying nice. what's happening to you right now, but that <laughs> right. should have happened during the week yeah. in your private time that when you get to Sunday morning, you were just this overflowing well of God. His word is in you. His spirit mm. has been stirring you. He's even possibly given you words or prophetic mm. insight on what he wants to do in that service. You come ready, like mm. you come armed and ready to go. 
And too oftentimes I think they, we, we step onto a stage and we're actually there to eat as opposed to serve. So I'm like, mm. I, I like to say like, okay, I'm bringing up, I'm bringing the platter of, of, of food for the, for the people to eat. Hey, here's a scripture. Here's, here's a song. Here's a prophetic word. Here's a moment of spontaneous. That's not just me babbling. It actually came out of something that the Lord prophetically gave me a couple weeks ago mm. to do in this service right now. Cause somebody in this room needs it. I can't know any of that or operate in any way like that. If I've not been in relationship with him and been in close secret place times with him all the week before, And so I would say like my responsibility in a corporate setting is actually what I've done all the way up until that corporate gathering. Mm. Because then I also struggle with the fact that when I come into a corporate gathering, part Mm. of my job is to let go Mm. and to let the spirit move. And if I'm not ready to do that, I will actually in my flesh start to try to make things happen. And I don't want to. I don't want to participate in that. And I and I don't want to be known for participating or even stewarding moments that are like man made mm. encounters. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I would just say, you know, again, the Lord's going to show up or He's not, and I can't control that. Right. You know. I also think we need to also lay aside our God showed up. Ooh, that was a move of God. I'm like, God can also move in peace and he can also move in quiet. And I've been in environments where the band wasn't rocking. Nobody was shouting. Mm -hmm. There was no dancing. And God, God met me in a more real way than he had for weeks Mm -hmm. in a moment like that. And I, as a worship leader, might have left that moment been like, I don't think anything happened in the room. Mm -hmm. And God's like, don't you dare say that. Mm -hmm. I moved just not according to the way you define a move of God. So that's why I say again, it's like, I have to actually lay down my desire for what I believe a move of God is (laughs) going to be, you know, Mm -hmm. because he might be like, uh, I have no plan of doing that. You know, Mm -hmm. oh, the weight of glory is in the place. I'm like, thank God he came. But next week, when you don't feel that weight of glory, he's still in the room. And he's still speaking to people, and he's still moving, and he's still active, even though it's not the way you define a move of God, you know? So we just got to be careful with that, too. And that's why I'm like, I think for me, because I can't define it by what happens in the room, I also can't control what happens in the room. My responsibility to help people encounter God is actually what I, how I encounter God in all the moments before I get up on a platform. Yeah. And then I let what I do be the overflow of that, of all that time with him. I love that. That's such a surrendered mindset. You know, it's like, I, I had one time I was preaching and afterward I was like, Lord, I just, that was not eloquent. My transitions were terrible. I, I just, man, that was terrible. And God's like, is it about you? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. No. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Right. I I thought of in 1 Corinthians 14 when Paul's talking about coming together to worship, and he said, oh, you you mentioned this scripture before we started recording. Yeah. When you come together, each one has a hymn, Mm -hmm. a song, a revelation, a tongue, an interpretation, whatever. But it's like you... I I believe in spontaneity, which I know you do too. You know, the Lord just moves and you got to respond. But then there's also that like bringing what the Lord has given you 100%. so that you you can bring it and share it. And if you're not, if the only time you're ever with the Lord is when <laughs> is we're in front of people and leading yeah. them, mm-hmm. that's like... You're not a leader. <laughs> that feels dicey, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You came needing to be led. Exactly. And uh, yeah. yeah, so it's a, the, I, I appreciate the emphasis on the just continuing daily with the Lord. Mm. And you're a person who just stays close to Jesus, not just tries to show up yeah, in a moment. Do a thing. Yeah, just do a thing. Yeah. And yeah, because I, I agree that 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 does not that that moment is insincere for the leader. Like no. it's just not the right moment for that moment. <laughs> you know, <laughs> have that have that moment with the Lord and then come and actually yeah. lead people. Well, and you just wonder what that moment could have been mm. if if you came ready. If you came and you had been in the word all week long and he was just revealing stuff to you all week long and you were just this well ready to explode with full of God, full of his spirit, just as he direct, because it's like, be ready in and out of season. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, if something happens in the room, somebody, somebody needs to be prayed for, for healing. I want to, I want to be already full of those scriptures and already full of the songs that I'm going to sing over that person. And so it's like coming ready. It's almost like 
if you're you, you're coming with the arrows already to, ready to go, yeah. you know, That's and good. Uh, yeah, I love that. My big question yeah. is. How do I join Gather House Church? <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you have to join another church. <laughs> I feel like you haven't been very clear about that. <laughs> You oh, can't. Man. You have to be part of a church, and then you can come be with the church. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. You can join us though for our gatherings. Yeah. 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 Well, but. tell us about the gatherings. Like, typically, when do they happen, and how, how do people get connected? Yeah. So our big citywide gatherings happen once a month on the third Friday of every month, and so all through 2024, and Lord willing, through all the years to come, every third Friday we gather the whole city. And it's, it's been amazing watching what God has done. I mean, people are flying in for these nights now, which is, like, insane. Wow. But, but it's just beautiful what God's doing. And, there, it's again, it's like that. It's just this tangible joy of, mm-hmm. like, experiencing the bride, you yeah. know? Um, and so then we've also started our, um, our weekly gatherings as well. So we call them daybreak. We do morning gatherings. Um, and right now, because we don't have a physical location yet, we do them in different spots across Houston, but we have a, a South side in Pearland. They meet on Tuesdays from, uh, seven 30 to nine. We do uh North side and Tomball. Those meet Wednesdays from seven to 9 AM. And, uh, and then Conroe, we just started, um, a couple months back. They meet, um, on Thursdays from seven to nine as well. And people travel from Pearland, like a, yeah. an hour or two hours to come to the Tomball one, yeah, like do. every yeah. week. I'm <laughs> like, really? come on, people. They do. Wow. Uh, they'll, they'll go on Tuesday morning in Pearland and then drive up. They, they <laughs> you gotta, leave like, you Pearland before that. I leave to go set up for, <laughs> wow. for Tomball. So, uh, it's, it's just amazing. But the community that's happening in even just those smaller, uh, uh, Cause it's like, there's another level of relationship when you pray with each other and when mm. you fight with each other and you're, you're not just like, you're not just like in a room together. You're actually mm. like in each other's lives. And when someone's husband is going in for surgery, we stop daybreak and we pray. Like mm. yeah. there's, there's this thing that's happening and it's just this like vibrant feels like Acts church, you know, where it's just like, they, we're just doing what we can. Like, we're mm. just, we just love Jesus and we're doing what we can. And uh, so that's fun. And so we're going to be adding more and more times as the Lord brings us worship leaders who can facilitate those. And especially as we get our own space, that will be very helpful um, to adding times as well. But Yeah. Well, check it out. We're going to include the Gather House link Great. in the description. Yeah. Check that out. Um, they do accept partnerships and we giving do, yeah. and and prayer for the ministry. So please yeah. check it out. Do that. We yeah. we love Gather House. We want people to support it, to be a part of it. Thanks, man. Um, so we totally support it. I had one more question come up, and it's something that's just... I just... It would help me. I don't know why yet, because, um, because it doesn't apply to me at this moment. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've gotten to a point where you and Charity are known by a n- large number of people, to a degree... How do you walk through being known, being f- fairly famous, you know, to some degree and mm-hmm. having a lot of people who are like, oh, I want to talk to these guys. And oh, um, because my experience with you has been um, and Charity has been like, hey, they're just they're really down to earth. They just talk like regular people. Yeah. They you know, I mean, what would you want to say to people about that? Well, I'm normally the guy that takes pictures of charity and the fans, so I don't. That, that would be probably a better. <laughs> they come up to both of us and then they hand me the yeah. phone. <laughs> hey, dude, can you take our picture? <laughs> I've literally been pushed out of pictures before, so so in ca- if you want a humbling experience, marry someone wow. who's a famous singer because that that'll humble you. But That's no, so no, I think you know it. It's. Gather House has actually been so helpful for us in the, in in this respect because we'll literally do on a Friday night we'll be in an arena with fifteen thousand people and then the next night we're at a big church and everyone's lining up to take pictures and they know every lyric of the song but then come Wednesday morning we're back in a little cafe in Tomball with twenty of the most beautiful hearted people mm. and it's just this reminder that like this is why we do it. Like, as much fun as that is, and, like, I'm not going to lie, like, it's fun. Like, there's an excitement that happens when you're in big sure. spaces and stuff like that. But, yeah. again, it's, like, it's in the flesh. Like, it's, like, yeah, this feels great. But the ultimate, 
reason we're there is the same reason it is for five people at 7 a.m. on a Wednesday morning as it is for 5,000 in mm -hmm. Saskatoon, Canada in a stadium. You know, it's like it, it, because the ultimate goal is to just move the heart of God and mm -hmm. to bring people closer to the heart of God. And I, I'm so thankful that the Lord has set it up for us in that way, because no matter how big it gets, no matter how many people know our names, we show up. And there are people who are doing life with us every every Wednesday or Tuesday or third or even gather nights, you know, too. Like, and I and I I just I just love that there's this constant reminder of like, hey, no matter how big you get out there, you ultimately come back to the secret place. And I just I call daybreaks my corporate secret place because <laughs> I meet with the Lord. We all do, you know. Right. But it's like it's always fun to come back to that moment and be like, oh, there's Debbie, there's Laura, uh, there there's there's Tina, there you know. And it's like there's these people who could care less who we are, could care less where the songs are on a chart. Yeah. They're just there because they love Jesus. You know, they're, the the whole like spectacle of us being in the room with them is like not there, you know? And it's like, I'm, I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Also, Charity and I, like, I just feel like the Lord took that desire away from us years ago of like needing to have a number one single or anything sure. like that just because we've seen it we've we've done it now and I've, I've always said like you know you think it's gonna be so awesome you get a dove award or your song hits number one and the idea of that is so romanticized that then you get it and then you go home that night and you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like I'm the same person I was yeah. a day before this thing hit one and I've romanticized this moment of like oh everything's gonna be different and you're mm. like wait a minute it's still me. I'm yeah. still here. Mm, yeah. I still, I'm, st I still have to keep working. Like it, it's not like a magic wand that all of a sudden all your worries go away. You know, right. it's like, so I think like the, the honest reality of like, and I wish more people would talk on this, like more famous people. I hate that word. Famous people yeah. would talk on this. <laughs> and like, because there's so much ambition in the church right now, yeah. especially in the younger generation of like, ooh, if I could just be on that platform, if I could just sing with those people. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to tell you right now that the joy that you get at your local church leading on a Sunday morning, it doesn't get better than that. Come actually, on. it can get worse because mm. when you're in those crowds, they don't actually care about you. Mm. You're just a commodity to them. And they just want a selfie with you. And they could care less if you live or die the next moment. They mm -hmm. just got a selfie with you. I'm like, the people that you know who know your name, who love you, who know your kids, who know your wife and will be there if something happens, that, you hold on to that. Yeah. And so I hate the church culture right now of like this celebrityism of like, ooh, if I could just get that, if I could just go viral on TikTok, I'm like, you actually don't want that. It's mm, it's yeah. it's not what you think it is. And you'll actually lose the thing that is actually valuable, which is your community. And sure. so, you know, I think it was Lauren Daigle said one time, but she just said, be be constant in where God has put you and he will open and close the doors that he has already determined for you. Yeah. Mm. And that has been such a beautiful place for Charity and I because I go, no matter how hard I work, no matter what kind of song I write, he's already determined how far that song will go, how many people will know what that song is. That's not on me. Mm. We released Thank You Jesus for the Blood one morning because he told us to. And it went viral and had like 20 million views the next day. People, labels call us and they're like, what did y'all do? How did you do it? I'm like, God, I don't know. There was <laughs> no algorithm. <laughs> I had no marketing team. We didn't have a radio single. We literally posted it and we asked the Lord to use it in his church. Hmm. And he sent it out and hmm. he did it. And I'm like, I just, I wish I could tell more young ministry minded people that like be faithful to what God has asked you to do. He's already set the lines of how far that ministry will go, how effective that ministry will be, uh, uh, the way we determine effectiveness. It's mm -hmm. always effective. But, and so like, just like relax in your calling because mm. he's already outlined how far that calling is going to go. Yeah. And he actually would rather you be faithful in this calling yeah. than to keep posting and posting and posting, hoping one day, what you're going to, what you're going to get famous and be asked to go to some conference somewhere. Big whoop. Yeah. Like, cool. That lasts for maybe a year. And then you either have to keep creating content or you, or you go back to where you were. Like, it's just, it's such a, fame is such a cloud and you literally fall through it and yeah. like hit the ground. Mm. And so it's not something to be desired. It's not something to go after. 
And I've found that those who last are the ones who have been through the fire over and over and over again and have been refined. I mean, Charity, if you could sit down with Charity, her life, God prepared her and refined her. There'll be two hours, a line of two hours worth of people. And she comes back onto the bus and I'm like, how is that? She's like, I'm tired. Like, it just doesn't even phase her, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, that's where I feel like the Lord finally goes, okay, I can use you. Because mm. you're not going to glory in yourself yeah. when You've this lost, happens. Well, you, you lost know? your taste for it. Exactly. Yeah, and I yeah. think the reason the Lord's giving you guys this platform is because you guys stay in the secret place. Yeah. The only way you're able to do this this way is because you stay in the secret place. Yeah. And I honor you for that. That's well, thanks, man. such an encouragement yeah. to me. So. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of, you know, discerning by the Spirit, sincerity, authenticity i think i think we all discern that in you guys oh thanks yeah really and and you know i've been to gather nights and and i've seen you in other environments we haven't you know we don't know each other really but i've seen you in different environments and i've always felt that about you so uh, and i say that just to just to honor what the lord has done in you yeah. and encourage you about it that yeah. Because I know you're hungry for that. That's that's your hunger is yeah. to just be to know Jesus, to be known by Jesus, to make Jesus yeah. famous. Whatever the cost is, it's all yeah. worth it. Yeah. And and you guys <clears throat> are sincere in that, and that's discernible. Thank you. That's super encouraging. And I will tell you one thing. I feel like the Lord has gifted you to disarm people's starstruckness and all that. <laughs> <laughs> like a unique gift to be able to do that. Yeah. So. Uh, whenever I talk to you, I feel like I'm talking to a human, you know, who's like me. <laughs> you are. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Prove yeah. it. Cece Winan said something one time, which I just thought was hysterical because she was at some event and someone was like, you're just so nice. And she was like, what else should I be? <laughs> right. You yeah. know? I'm like, the fact that we've allowed it to get further than that is crazy. But yeah. it's like, you know, we're just like, we're just yeah. people serving the king. Like, That's yeah. good. And my talent is only due to his his doing in me like yeah. i ha i can't stand on that i can't be like i'm awesome because the spirit shows up it's like right, right. he shows he does yeah. all of it we're just vessels you know so right. but it's such an honor to get to do it charity and i are so incredibly honored to because I, I just tell i'm like he literally looked to and fro across the earth and then saw us and our little community of misfits and was like hey y'all write some songs that can edify the bride and we were like the fact that we get to do that and we get to tour every night and it's such an incredible honor. Like yeah. we never lose sight of that. We just, it's, we love it and we wouldn't want to do anything else with our life. It's such a privilege and an yeah. honor to get to serve the King of Kings. Like the fact that he knows my name, let alone uses my songs and his bride is crazy. Come on. Yeah. That's fun. I love That's that. good stuff. And as you've been touring kind of like a cap, um, you said you feel like you see the Lord's move as you tour and stuff. Yeah. So what kind of things do you see the Lord doing in the broader body? Yeah, I mean, the Lord is bringing revival to his church. And Come on. I'm always afraid to use that word because I think it's, it's overused. <laughs> I feel like God is doing something so new. And I hate you. all of this language has been so overused, but it's so true. Like he's doing a new thing in his church. And I think it's just up to us to discern it and get on board with it. Yeah. But I've really sensed in a lot of the places we've gone, it's almost like the Lord is saying, I'm about to do something here. Either get on board or get off it. Come on. But I'm doing it, mm. whether you like it or not. And we've seen lots of ministry uh, leadership changeovers and stuff like that. And it's literally because I'm like, I'm seeing God like literally preparing his bride mm. for war or whatever it may be that that he has us prepared for. Maybe it's just his coming, but it's like there's something you can feel it tangibly in every single yeah. camp. And they might not use this language, but you can sense this like this thing, it's like this r r rustling of like, you can mm. just sense it like yeah. Yeah. God's doing something and people are coming to like revelation of like his spirit moving yeah. and like what we're talking about today, like prayer, true prayer, to, true like speaking to the Lord on a daily basis, yeah. true community, true unity. And, and it's like a lot of the things that I think entangled us so easily as the church and the religious spirits and things like that, they're just starting to come to light. 
you know, mm-hmm. like yeah. they're just getting exposed yeah. all yeah. the time. And even the sexual sin inside right. leaderships and stuff, it's like, it's being exposed. I believe cause the Lord's like purifying the bride for whatever it may be coming. I, yeah. I'm either like he's returning or it's going to be a war, but yeah. it's one of those things like yeah. he's preparing it. But it's like, I really truly believe that like, it's the end time revival. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's the last time that he wakes his church up and it may be a hundred or a thousand years. I don't know what it is, but I do believe that what we're experiencing today is the beginning of that like end times. Like he's like, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yeah. Your sons and your sons are going to prophesy your old men dream dreams. Like this is going to happen in every camp, in every state, in every nation mm. I'm coming, you know, so prepare yourself. So it just gets us excited. Like mm, we're yeah. starting to see a similar language being spoken. It's like the Rosetta Stone of the Kingdom, is what I call it. It's mm. like, hey, <laughs> you shouldn't be using language like that. You're Baptists. You know? <laughs> right, They're like, yeah. why is that Pentecostal talking like a Methodist? You know? And it's like, right. but it's like this, just like the Lord's really doing that thing where He's like, yeah. I'm coming back for my people, and they're gonna they're gonna be my people and identified as mm. my people. Yeah. And so I we just sense that. And so it gets us excited for what yeah. we're doing at Gather House. Because I'm like, well, it feels like we're just a small part of what he's doing on a much larger scale globally. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what we see with two or more prayer meetings. Like, we start multiple ones with like Church of the Bible centric. And I'm like, they're using language. I'm like, oh, did you just say that? Like, yeah. and, and, you know, we start a prayer meeting and people start like laying hands on each other when before they wouldn't even touch each other. <laughs> yeah. And then their Bible study starts to become more of a prayer centric yeah. gathering where it's Bible and prayer. Yeah. And then somebody has a word of knowledge. Oh, a word of knowledge <laughs> about somebody where that would have never happened six months ago sure. at this place, yeah. you know? And then the flip side, I've been to charismatic churches where I see we need more Bible people. We need more Bible. Mm, yep. We want to get back to the Bible. Yep. It's just happening everywhere. And yeah. it's, Balance. Yeah. So awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Praise There's God. A, you know, Ryan, you're talking about just last days and Jesus coming back and getting ready and all those things. Right down the road from here is a little Baptist church. Yeah. And just recently I've gotten to know their pastor. He's 87 years old. Come on. He is he is so full of zeal and passion and energy for the Lord. Like, I mean, he you can't stop him, you know? Mm-hmm. And just the other day, I was eating breakfast with him, and he was saying, like, like the church is not ready. Jesus is coming back, and he's not coming back for some filthy bride. <laughs> it's and so church, true. And I you mean, know the way you can talk when you're yeah. 87. You're just like... <laughs> you can get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> and I know. It's going to be so good. <laughs> but he's, he's like, you know, the church is not ready, and we need... And this is, this is a, a guy... In a Baptist church, yeah. okay, and but he's been through like the '70s Jesus movement. The Spirit poured out on Houston. He was seeing wow. healings. Yeah. He was like, so he's not like Baptist, whatever the negative things that people might think of about that. He is on fire, and he feels like we need prophetic voices. Yeah. We need the church needs to stand up and get ready. Yeah. Light your lamps. Yep. Uh, and, and and start calling out to the Lord and readying ourselves yeah. because he feels like that God is doing something right now that like we all got to get on board. Oh, yeah. And because he's doing it, yeah. it's going to yeah. be good unless you're not on board, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that's so, going to suck. Big well, time. I, I really appreciate when like the older generation is speaking into the newer and be like, we've not experienced anything like, like this Mm. is truly something that like God is doing because they're like, we've not even experienced this at the height of our revivals. Like there's something that's happening in the spirit. That's just like, you just know Mm -hmm. Jesus is doing something or coming, (laughs) you know, I don't. (laughs) So anyways, it's, it's, it's an exciting time. I'm like, I told charity the other day, I said, I'm so glad I'm alive right now to mm. to witness this, you yeah. know? I don't know how long it's going to last, but getting to see this and be a part of it and even get to, like, minister through it is such an exciting time to be alive, yeah. you know? Yeah, Come on. Good. Love it. Yeah. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks been, for having me. Been so blessed by you. Check out wearegatherhouse.com. Yeah. Wearegatherhouse.com. And uh, we'll see you all next time. As a reminder, the Prayer Culture Podcast is a ministry of two or more, which is a crowdfunded ministry. So if you enjoy this content, please check out our website and giving page listed in the description. Also, when you have a second, hit the like and subscribe button.